Hello, this is a follow-up video on this Yamaha G2 that's five foot seven inches long, made in 1975. And on the assessment video, we noticed several things that needed to be done to make it play properly. And uh, I want to just see some of the work we've done and a few things we still need to do. But um, first of all, we want to look at the key weight, which was a major factor. On the assessment video, we noticed that the B was far heavier than the C. Uh, now we've lubricated the hinge, and which I'll show you in a minute, and uh, it's now lighter than it would normally be. The normal weight is roughly is five one pound coins and a 20p, and it just goes down. By the way, you need to put the pedal down. Now it goes all the way down with my foot on the pedal. And so that's obviously lighter than, than that. That's, if we watch it now, it's just about to go down with 43.75 grams. And as we tap, gently tap the bottom of the key bed, it goes down. So that's lighter than it would normally be. This, so this is a lighter action. Now, it's not wrong to have a lighter action. The piano's been played, refaced, and played a lot, and therefore the action's gone lighter. And uh, funnily enough, we have a G2 piano in Oxford, which we restored for uh, a concert pianist who comes to Oxford every summer. And he likes a light action in his piano in, in the USA. Um, but when he comes here, we've actually put hammers on and weighted it to about uh, 55 grams to make it heavier than normal because he needs his fingers strengthened for the concerts, um, which is his own comments, very interesting. Now, this one here, um, if we put it on C, we find it goes down even now. This is with uh, 43.75. So C was, in the other video, you'll see C was lighter, and we'll look at why in a minute. But um, now if that's, that's actually 40 grams roughly, so it's five grams lighter than the B. Um, five grams variation isn't a huge amount. Though if we wanted to, we could, uh, I'll show you what we could do to get the weight of this up a bit, if we want to do that. So that does go down now with 40 grams. So there's a variety here between 40 and 45. I think rough, we'll find that most of them are like that. We'll just check one or two others. Um, there's another one, that's G, so roughly 43.75. Um, a the same. So there's one or two that are slightly lighter, but generally it's now a lighter action, which is say, if you're an occasional player, you might prefer, uh, or if you just want to play rapid passages, then it's very nice to have a light action. Of course, piano actions were very light in the old days when they, as it were, merged out of harpsichords, were extremely light. And nowadays actions tend to be heavier. So uh, um, if you don't want a heavier action, then this is ideal because it's got at least 30, 40 years life left in it. Uh, by the way, cosmetically, we've been working on the case and also we replaced the key top that was cracked here. don't know if you'll be able to detect from the video which one it was, um, but uh, I'm trying to help you by putting it roughly in the middle of the video here. But it's a pretty good match. It's a Yamaha key top, so um, I think that's reasonably good. So on the previous video, which I'll t attach a link to, uh, when we lifted these hammers, uh, the B is the left-hand one here. and. The B didn't really go down at all when I lifted it up. So the, ha the hinge was um, too tight, far too tight. Um, so we took it out, lubricated it. Now with Protec, just a couple of things about lubrication I think it'd be useful to mention. I don't use uh, anything hardly other than Protec, a very thin lubricant. Uh, it's a polymer based one, very, very light lubricant. Um, and manufacturers of actions also say that you shouldn't use too much even of that because the wood can swell. So very gent very just a minimal amount. Um, if you haven't got access to that, I, our advice is not to use anything like WD-40, which gums up the hinge or other sort of oils because uh, they, they will definitely damage it and they'll cause it in the long run to seize up again. But if you can, haven't got lubricant, take the whole thing off as we showed in the last video and then work the hinge backwards and forwards. It does take a long time, but it's much better than putting lubricant on. Um, and if you work it back and forwards and just put a little bit of pressure on it at the same time, then the hinge will free off. So you can do that certainly. And you'd have to, obviously it's a very long job to do that. Um, lubricant is, you use sparingly is, is, is important. We, we, we also lubricate the front rail with this, sorry, the center rail here with dry lubricant talc, and which we find is the best lubricant to use for that. And again, action manufacturers use that as well. And they also use talc on, on the roller here. Now the other video shows us marking the hammers as well. And I pointed out that the left hand one, let's have a, if you see, looks as though it's hitting the string earlier on the left and 
later on the right hand side. In other words, it's, the hammer's not hitting all three strings cleanly at the same time. Um, and indeed, we found that refacing one of them, which I've done here, if you can see this one, it's slightly different color. It's, it's, I've taken the top surface off gently, especially on the left, as you can see. And indeed, it's made it sound much cleaner, brings out the harmonics. It makes a huge difference, actually. If you do reface the piano, it's well worth marking the hammers afterwards, or we find, to um, just check that it's been refaced really accurately. Uh, I'm going to try and show you, see if you can hear when we reface this one, we, any difference. So we'll just listen to, the, to how, how, how the, it hits the strings first, and then we'll reface it, see what sort of difference we make. So if this is the A that we've refaced, and hopefully both those strings will sound the same. It's not just the volume, I'm trying to play at the same volume of both. But it's the tone of them. So that note is very clear, and if you listen to, there's a lack of clarity, you may not pick that up on the video. Played quietly or loud, that's very clear, all three strings hitting, uh, hammer hitting all three strings at the same time. This one's less clear. Now if we listen to the left hand string compared to the right hand, played at the same volume, I don't know if you can pick it up, but the left hand one is slightly louder, but also has a more clarity to it. The harmonics are coming out more clearly. Left hand, right hand string. Now let's try refacing that. Now if we look at that hammer, that's G sharp. We can see the left hand is clearly hitting sooner and this one's the same, so we're going to have to do that later. But if we listen to it, we're going to reface just a slight angle here. To, to uh, So I'm emphasizing the left-hand one when I'm refacing here. And this isn't a full refacing. Full refacing, you'd start down here, obviously, but this is just the final refacing, as it were. As we're talking about the surface of the hammer now. So I want the left hand to be disappearing, which should go in that direction, really, towards the top. Um, just as you would with full refacing. And then just take off a bit on the left-hand side. As I say, it's not, we don't want to angle it the other way, so we've got to be very careful not to overdo this. It takes quite a lot of thought while you're doing it to make sure, at least I, I find it does anyway. And going back this way. So taking off the, the left-hand, making an emphasis on just slightly, and hopefully we're still straight on that. Let's just take some of the fluff off and the, using this end of the file here just to smooth it off a bit, just for, to get, obviously this isn't quite finished and it still looks a bit rough. Uh, could do with even finer sandpaper after this just to make it look good. Although this will be sort of 95% of the difference in tone from this. So let's have a look at it, see if it looks I'm holding it with the hammers at the side, just so I don't damage the hinge. Um, I'm sure if you're a technician, you have a better way of doing it and would like to comment. Um, always like to learn. So there we are. Let's, uh, let's have a look at that now. It looks as though it's leaning to the left, so I might have o overdone it. But let's listen to it and see what difference it's made. So the, the A, which you've done before, G sharp. Now they're both... It, it's, it's the high harmonics and the, the general sort of interest in the sound that's come back with doing that. See, that's, that's just dull compared to this. And it might need, obviously, now it might be slightly too bright, so we'd have to do some uh, voicing. But you can hear the difference. Those two have got some interest in them, and this, that one hasn't. That one doesn't seem too bad already, but so we have to obviously can't spend all day doing it. Have to decide which ones are, and then work. Always it's more refining and more refining. And we have a sheet here, by the way, um, which uh, we afterwards we just write anything down that we've discovered on the piano. Talking about twisting the bass strings earlier on, so we haven't done all of that yet. We've just done repinning and um, so on. So just rough notes on that. 
but uh, that can be added to as time goes on. And uh, if, if, indeed, if you buy a piano, you could download this off our website and um, uh, have a look at it yourself, see if you've got any comments on the piano that you bought. I'm just gonna mark those two with carbon paper again. And have a look and see whether we've refaced properly or not. So that's, uh, that's, the G, that's the A, that's the G sharp. And as you can see, ha having marked them, they're now very even, those marks. Um, we just tidy up the hammers a bit with fine grade paper. And uh, as I say, we, we would take a long time doing this, and obviously it's the most important thing, the final finishing off. Um, but generally, once you've, decide, once you've discovered what needs doing, you obviously can go a bit faster on all the others, because it doesn't take too long. That one looks as though it needs doing this one, but that one, didn't this one here sounded not not well at all interestingly although the marks don't show that so much but when we were listening to it we got the tone of these two now how we want them so now we just try and match the tone and then there, might, there will be definitely some final voicing to even it up afterwards so that's some fine work we haven't finished the piano but i wanted to show you some of the work we've done those that was the a and g sharp and that one definitely is a duller sound. But it's not just that it's quieter, it's, it's, dull, it's not bringing out the harmonics. So now we've found out the kind of tone we can get on the others, then we're obviously gonna try and get as good a tone as we can on all of them. And then there'll be fine voicing after that. It's the wrong key for that, isn't it? Now. The lightness of the action now, I did comment on that. It's not wrong to have a light action, and in fact, a lot of people do like lighter actions, so it's not that light, but you can play very fluently on it. It's very, very easy to play under the, under the fingers, but not too light. We're gonna to have to even up one or two notes, I think, the five grams difference. Though C, in fact, is the much lighter than, than all the rest, so that's just um, gonna be a question of repinning that, I think. That again is a bit dull. So I hope this has helped to um, show you some of the work we do on the piano. A piano like this will carry on for 30 years more. It has been played quite a lot, but that doesn't mean to say it hasn't got a lot of years played. It's a very well-made piano. It has a good tone in tenor and bass, but some of these strings, we're definitely going to um, twist a lot more of these strings to get the tone back out of them. If you look at the other video, see what we mean by that. So I hope that's given you some idea of um, what can be done to a grand piano. If you've got your own grand piano and um, uh, you want to test the weights yourself, that's not a bad idea, just to see if there's a lot of variety. This one was um, a particular issue on this piano was the variety of touch. Um, that's not common to get that much variety of touch, but it, it can happen. Very common is to have too heavy an action or indeed too light an action. So it's worth testing just to see. Thank you very much for listening.